Hello, welcome to another video from Avenue X looking at Chinese Romland in the past week and let's get right into it. Luckily, we don't have that much going on this week. First, there is a drama that didn't air according to schedule. This time is the Xiao Zhan Li Qing drama Meng Zhong Na Pian Hai, where the dreams begin. It was supposed to go live on the 21st on CCTV. Didn't happen. It says it's postponed. Kind of happens a little bit too frequently recently. And then let's talk about dramas. Usually how I talk about them, the ones that have gone live first. Chronologically, on May the 22nd, we have a drama that went live on Tencent, contemporary romantic drama called San Fen Ye, English title. Here we meet again. Clearly, that's a story of two people who know each other before and meet again. And it's led by Wu Qian and Zhang Bingbing. I did watch three episodes of this drama and this is a really weird one to the point where I constantly zone out. After three episodes, I have a vague impression of what's going on, but I really cannot concentrate at all while I was watching. So this drama has that weird hypnotizing effect of you're kind of looking at it, but you're not. I don't know why, but <laughs> that's how it worked on me for the first three episodes. The other one that went live on the same day is an IQE drama called Shu Nian, English title in later years. And it's a family drama that depicts multiple generations within one big family. It is led by Hao Lei, Wang Ou, Liu Yijun, Song Dan Dan, Tang Yixing, Wang Yanling. All of them are quite familiar faces in drama land. I've watched three episodes. This drama has aired, I think, today to four or five episodes. I still need a bit more time to make up my mind about it. It's a pretty standard domestic contemporary drama. Right from the beginning, it has a little bit blood pressure raising potential. So uh, I'll need to watch a couple of more episodes to decide whether I want to keep watching. Then there's also drama that went live on the 24th on Tencent. Qizi的新世界, literally meaning wife's new world. English official title is My Wife. So again, a contemporary marriage focused story led by Yuan Shanshan, Du Chun, Ren Hao. Somehow just by looking at the cast, I feel like dog blood is uh, ahead. Maybe because their previous works and their internet reputation. All three of them have been in centers of quite a lot of internet dramatic episodes. Moving on, we have a drama that's scheduled for the coming Monday if nothing weird happens. I do hope this one happens. Which is a drama that will air on satellite television. Two of them plus ITE plus Tencent, the Gongsu Jingyin prosecution elite. This, in pretty much everybody's opinion, is Dili Reba's first official joint xiong drama from the idol fantasy parrot drama land to the proper serious drama land. Let's see if she can stick this landing. One day after that, on the 30th, end of this month, we have a drama that will go live on Youku. I haven't even heard about this project before and it's definitely not led by super famous people. Kong Xue Er and Wu Yu Heng. And it's just the title that caught my attention. It's a typical idol romantic contemporary drama. The title is Xiang Jiao Xian Sheng Bu Shui Jiao. It literally means Mr. Banana doesn't go to sleep or doesn't sleep. English title is Sleepless Night. Both characters are lead female and lead male. Both of them cannot sleep. One day they meet and they realize by touching each other, they can fall asleep. <laughs> hey, how many times have we seen that kind of, you are my antidote. You are the only cure in this world for me. I have a weird condition that nobody can deal with apart from you. And somehow like it's mutual. That means like you're destined to marry if you want to sleep for the rest of your life. You kind of have to end up in the same bed every night. If it's a good comedy, I mean, it may be watchable. Otherwise, it will just fade away in the sea of drama land. And then we have a couple of other dramas at different stages of production. I'm just gonna talk about them one by one. First, there's a drama that has started official promotion, releasing official posters. Not sure when that's gonna come. It's a Tencent contemporary drama. Another potentially blood pressure raising drama because it's called 我和婚姻的战斗. <laughs> Literally means the battle I have with marriage. It's like worse than our marriage or my wife. You're not only battling against your spouse, but you're actually battling against the marriage itself. Good luck. And it's led by Cai Wenjing and Feng Xiaofeng. We have another drama that has started promoting. Another contemporary drama. <laughs> Why am I like this? I I'm so sarcastic, sorry. Uh, it's called Yi Wu Zhi Cheng. And the one I just said doesn't have an English title. This one, I don't think it has one either. They're very new release. And this drama has something to do with dancing because our female lead character is a dancer. You can tell that. And it's played by Qin Lan, who was a dancer, I think, when she was younger. And she did play multiple dancers in her acting career. This is another one. And she's this time paired up with Zhong Hanliang. Zhong Hanliang was one of those 
我的初心 actor when I was really really young. I have moved on and hopefully have become wiser <laughs> as I age. He, he just like is still playing roles of the age range that he definitely is physically out of. Way too many things he's done to his face. <laughs> Ah yeah, you're so good looking and already very young appearance wise compared to your real age. You don't have to try to do that much stuff. I miss the olden days when people just don't have those options and they can just have very natural expressions and muscles on their face that look like real people. These days, once you start to move the muscles, oh, you just look terrible. On camera, nothing comes across naturally. It actually destroys your acting, destroys the communication with the、uh, audiences. It's not the drama itself; it hasn't come out yet. It's just like even if you look at the posters and how badly people get photoshopped. <laughs> the next one is a piece of news on a drama that has wrapped, and it gets a little bit confusing because it has a title that confuses me. It's called Hey Bai Sen Ling, literally means black and white forest. And the reason it confuses me is、uh, there is a drama called Hey Bai Mima, which is Black and white code or password or what that type of meaning. That drama was led by Wang Ziqi and Su Xiaotong. Their contemporary drama re collaboration after Imperial Coroner. That's a police and crime drama. This one is also a thriller mystery kind of crime drama, and it's also led by Su Xiaotong. But the male lead is Ding Yuxi. So it's Ding Yuxi and Su Xiaotong drama that has wrapped, and I haven't even heard about this project starting. The Hei Bai Mima may come out sooner than you think, and then Hei Bai Sen Ling probably won't see it till next year. And then the other two actors in this drama is also quite interesting: Ning Li and Han Xue. Okay, so you have Ning Li, Han Xue, Ding Yuxi, Su Xiaotong in a mystery thriller contemporary drama. Uh, sorry, I haven't heard about this project before. Last two weeks were too crazy. Moving on to the next piece of news. Uh, we have a drama that is set to start shooting very, very soon, and it's kind of eighty percent, ninety percent confirmed because of the cast. It's definitely gonna be stared at from day one till when it goes live. It is based on a quite well-known, I think, novel called Mei Gui 的故事 or Mei Gui 故事 And the English title officially is The Roses Tale, and it's contemporary romantic drama led by Liu Yifei. Yeah, Huo Jianhua. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I like that? Lin Gengxin, huh? Peng Guanyin, interesting. Tong Dawei, what? How many men do you have in this drama? So basically, it's a one female lead and many men in her life type of story. Like Tong Dawei, I believe so far in the rumors plays her brother. So that's not like romantic relationship. Huo Jianhua supposedly is playing like the true love of her life, but didn't end up together. And I think Lin Gengxin plays her husband, who she had a kid with, but then she divorced. And then Peng Guanyin, I'm not sure where to place him. But in that contemporary drama, basically you have the leading female role played by Liu Yifei, whose name literally means rose. Rose's story, pretty straightforward. It's gonna start shooting very soon. I have to say, I'm excited for the fact that Huo Jianhua is coming back in the drama. How long haven't we seen him? I think ever since Ru Yijuan. He he's like quiet. He's not really working in drama and acting anymore. Honestly, I am excited to see Liu Yifei and Huo Jianhua pairing up. I haven't never imagined this would happen, but if it happens, oh for sure. Let me see what it looks like. We also have a piece of news on the drama Changfengdu Destined, which was in last last week. Aichi package. They've got the license. Think for Aichi. They are. Aiming at for June or July, they want to air this drama. Although right now it is in a little bit trouble for certain costume in this drama. In this case, I think official costume. So for the male lead, he has an official position in the court, and when it's very ceremonial and very serious occasions, this drama's genius costume designer effed it up. With making it looking like Japanese Asian costume, and it's a huge landmine zone that you cannot step into right now in Chinese drama land. There was a drama that literally got pulled off because of all the Japanese elements that are overtly done, and this drama has unfortunately that thing. And I don't know how you can edit it out. I mean, last year Galaxy drama when it has that ribbon thing, which is not a Chinese costume thing, it's only a decorative part, and when you are changing. The shot, right? If you moving tighter and digitally removing some parts of an ornament, you can do that. And Galaxy did it before it went live, so that it was saved. But for Changfengdu, the problem is not one part or decorative element on the costume that you can hide with post production. It's the actual shape and cutting around the shoulder. I don't see how you can digitally change that. <laughs> 
honestly, unless you reshoot that whole scene. So, although it gets the license because it's already been noticed and then posted online in China, if this thing gets any bigger, they're gonna spend a shit ton of money re-editing, cutting things out, changing things to save this drama. And honestly, how many ignorant people do we have in this business who don't know what the heck they're doing? If you have any basic idea about ancient costume research of like the Asian part of the world, like from China, Korea, ancient Japan, like all those regions, Eastern Asia, if you've read into any of the history, right, it's not hard at all. It's really obvious to identify the difference between different time periods and different styles and what clearly is not what. I'd understand if you're a European person, you've never come across this culture or you know, you're from other countries that are far away from this land and it all appears to be the same to you, that's fine. But <laughs> for professional people who work in costume designs, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's so stupid. I really do hope that doesn't affect this drama's airing. I want to see the real lovers playing real lovers in the drama. One last thing I want to quickly mention before I finish today's video, one day or two before I release my video on Hu Xin, Back from the Brink, it kind of already crashed the drama, so I pinged a comment on the top of that video saying the drama kind of crashed right after I made the video. And yesterday or the day before, there have been two days, wow, <laughs> on Weibo and then China's internet social media, it was funny. One of the writers came out of this drama and sending very long announcements on their account. Also like having an argument actually with the official drama account, basically saying the first 15 episodes and the rough outline of this drama was done by this person. But then when they submitted the thing to the drama, the drama invited another script director into the whole game and then the platform and that person they worked together and decided the first 15 episodes are not written to their satisfaction so they kind of fired this scriptwriter or the scriptwriter had too much of an argument with them about how the story should be going so this person quit only leaving the 15 episodes and the um, structure outline of the drama and the rest of the drama is written by the newly hired person plus Yoku's platform so when this drama literally crashed from episode 16 onwards and people didn't understand what's going on there's a lot of complaint about people who really liked this drama in the early stage on the internet start to fire bullets at scriptwriters and this scriptwriter came out and saying it's not my responsibility i didn't create all those things that you think are landmines. I didn't even create the character by Xiao Sheng. It was added later by the later comers. They wrote a huge article about exactly what they put in the first 15 episodes and what is not their writing. And then there's this back and forth argument online between the drama and this particular scriptwriter. And it was, wow, I haven't seen that be like so openly fought on internet. I definitely sat aside, drank my tea, ate my melon, and just laughed at the whole situation. It's not a masterpiece even if you just look at the, let's say, take out that crashing element. If you just look at the 15 episodes, if it's purely this person's work, it's not masterpiece either, but it's just like making logical sense to a point and not being too tropey. Whereas later it just starts to get really confusingly not making sense. And it also shows just how messy drama land is and how not worked out and random the process of making a drama for the platforms are like in China. You have the money and technique to hire the greatest CGI companies in the world now if you really want to do it with Chinese drama land. I mean, look at Chinese film land. You can see the potential if you have money. Any type of camera you want to use, really, if you have money again, these days in drama land. Basically, in hardware stuff, you can have the best thing. But in terms of how a crew gets made up, the process of hiring people, the professionalism in script writing, everything, how it gets worked out, it's so unregulated, not worked out, not streamlined, not properly managed, and all over the place, random. And it's been like that, I mean, from day one, always, I know, but I haven't been in the industry for years now. And I'm like, it's over a decade and you still haven't worked out these things at all? Really? Just like so little improvement. <sighs> I mean, no wonder. 95% of dramas come out of Chinese drama land are pure crap. Honest opinion, because we do have too many dramas that come out every year. So 95% is actually not so ridiculous if you think about how many dramas. And today I'm in a very weird mood. I don't know why, but it is what it is. End of May. Uh. <laughs> Thank you for watching Omni X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.